Recently, the FDA banned antibacterial soap. So today we're gonna to talk about what is actually happening and why they're doing it. channel I stick to food and nutrition stuff but I did think that this issue with the antibacterial soaps kind of applied to the whole healthy lifestyle thing it's something that I've been thinking a lot about personally for a while and it does have some other implications into our overall food system so I thought it'd be important to talk about and if you are new here and you're not subscribed my name is Sarah I'm a registered dietitian and this channel is all about healthy eating and food and all that kind of stuff so if you're into that sort of thing then make sure that you subscribe so as far as what's happening with this whole thing the FDA is banning in 19 common ingredients found in antibacterial soaps and the two most common ones that are being banned are triclosan and triclocarbon. Now companies have a year to either remove these ingredients from their products or just remove the product from the market altogether. And this is going to apply to commercial hand soaps and body washes but it won't affect hand sanitizers because those don't use these antibacterial agents. They usually use alcohol and it's not going to affect hospitals so they'll still be able to use these type of soaps for going into surgery and things like that which is originally what they were made for. And the reason this is all happening is because the FDA has come to the conclusion that there really aren't any benefits to the consumer using these antibacterial soaps over just regular soap, and there are some potential risks. Now we are gonna get into what those risks actually are, but it's important to know that companies did have a time to submit information to the FDA while they were making this decision. But after that time period was over, the FDA said that either the information they got, there just wasn't enough of it, or that the evidence they did get just wasn't strong enough for what they were wanting. And a big thing the FDA wanted evidence for was that these antibacterial soaps actually worked better or gave some sort of benefit that you couldn't get from regular soap. And they just really weren't finding that. Because the thing is, when it comes to washing our hands, it's a lot more about the scrubbing action that we're doing with the soap. The friction of our hands moving together and then the soap itself work together to dislodge any bacteria or other stuff on our hands, get it off, trap it in the soap, and then let it get washed off in the water. So without any clear benefit to using antibacterial soaps over regular soap, then we need to go and look at the actual risks. So the main risk with using antibacterial soap is antibiotic resistance. And I've talked about antibiotic resistance before on here, but just a quick refresher if you're not familiar, the basic idea is that we have all of these bacteria out and about. And if we're overusing these antibacterials, antibiotics, any of these kinds of things, what can happen is, is you have these bacteria mutating and then becoming resistant to the the antibiotics. And this is a big problem because if we have these bacteria mutating and changing so that we can't use our antibiotics on them, then that means it's going to become really difficult to treat these diseases because all those antibiotics that we have just aren't going to work anymore. And antibiotics are a really powerful tool in our medical toolkit. They help us treat a lot of different infections and conditions. And so if we don't have those, it could cause a situation where we have people getting really sick and no way to help them or treat them effectively. And this is already happening there are different bacteria that tend to thrive in hospitals because it's such a sterile environment and you have all these people being treated all the time and it's one of the big risks of even staying in a hospital and why they don't want people staying in hospitals longer than they have to because you could become infected with one of these antibiotic resistant bacteria and that's really hard to treat. Now this doesn't mean that antibiotics are bad or you should never take them if you need them to treat an infection but it means that we don't want to be taking antibiotics when we don't need to and we want to make sure we're taking them the full time they're prescribed, not stopping early, and it also means that we don't want to be using antibacterials in our hand soaps too because that could contribute to the problem. And this is also why overuse of antibiotics in animal agriculture is such a big deal because when we're using antibiotics on animals that aren't sick, that don't need them, then it's just going to create even more potential for these bacteria to mutate and become resistant to the antibiotics that we use. Another risk that I think about just kind of anecdotally, I don't have any hard evidence for this. I don't know if there's any out there, but I kind of think that if people are using antibacterial hand soaps, maybe they also don't wash their hands as effectively. Maybe people are out there saying, oh, I got this antibacterial stuff, just rub it around, wash it off, no big deal, I'm fine, when what we know, like I said earlier, is that the scrubbing action with the soap is what is really effective at actually making washing your hands do anything. So if people aren't washing their hands well because they have this 
false sense of security from the antibacterial hand soap, then not only do we have the problem of these unnecessary antibacterials and the antibiotic resistance and everything that we just talked about, but also the fact that people are doing this and their hands still aren't even clean. Now something I've been doing personally over the past couple years or so is switching over to handmade soaps. And it seems like now anytime I go to a craft fair or a vendor fair or anything like that, there's at least one person there who is selling some sort of handmade soap, whether it's goat milk soap or olive oil soap or coconut oil soap, something like that. There's one there if you're looking for them. And I really like it because not only can I get a soap that doesn't have all of this stuff that we're talking about today that we don't want in our soap, but also I get to support a small business person that's doing a really cool artisan skill that's kind of getting lost in our society for a lot of people. And then also on top of that, I really enjoy it. The handmade bar soaps, for some reason, they just make me feel super fancy and luxurious, and it doesn't cost a lot of mon money to like elevate things to that next level for me. I really enjoy them. Um, I think it's really fun. So overall, it's a win. And as far as what you can do, I say just take a look at your soap, see what you're using, see if it's an antibacterial soap, and then consider making the switch. It is going to be a year before these changes go into effect, and you know companies are always coming in with other ingredients to replace things and all of that. So so just look at your soaps, see if they're antibacterial, consider making the switch. There are options out there. You might have to search a little or dig a little to find them, but they are there if you just look. So that's the deal with the whole antibacterial soap situation. I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on this new development. And if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes, make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated. And I want to show you how to do it. And if you're loving the free info here, but you're finding that you need something more personalized, don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching and counseling. So if you're interested in that, just let me know and we can get that set up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.